What is up, Elevate students? It is Pastor Cole here with another message for you this week. We are going to be continuing in our WWE series, Wrestling With Everything. I'm excited to share with you tonight. Just want to give you a few quick reminders. Remember to go to all of our social media handles and give us a follow or a like on those pages, Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube. Make sure you're in our group me app. Um, that way we can stay in touch with you and stay connected with you. Make sure that you're also following the church's YouTube page. It's, um, WSFC, um, or Word and Spirit Family Church. You can search it, find it. Um, it's on all of our social media pages. You can check it out. Um, you can also go to the website, wsfcalton.org and find everything you need on there as well. So make sure that you are getting on there and following the YouTube channels. That way you can get all the pastors or pastors messages and following our youth ones. So you can get all of these messages as well. Um, and then last but not least, make sure that you are filling out your registration for Summer Scream. Summer Scream is a go. We are still going. It's still on. So make sure that you are going on to www.summerscream.org and filling out the camp registration form. You can do that with your parent. Make sure all the information is correct. That way we have it in the system and you are good to go. Speaking of Summer Scream, go ahead and check out this video. Here we go, play ball! Man, Summer Scream is going to be a blast. I cannot wait for that to go down. It's going to be a good time to hang out with you guys and to get into God's presence. Tonight, we're continuing in our WWE series. I mentioned last week that we're going to be talking about this belt right here um, that I have. Um, just a little backstory. I love wrestling. If you don't know this about me, I'm a huge wrestling fan. Uh, grew up watching wrestling. Um, I host a podcast about wrestling or co-host a podcast about wrestling with my buddy. And, uh, so we talk wrestling all the time. I have all these wrestling shirts that I'm rocking tonight. I'm actually wearing a remake of one of my favorite shirts. It's a John Cena shirt and it says the champ is here. And that is actually tonight's message title is the champ is here. This was actually the belt that John Cena kind of created or made famous. I don't want to say he created it, but this was the belt that he rocked when he was the champion. He introduced this belt when he became champion. And it is the spinner belt, which matched his character because at the time he was kind of this rapper, blinged out guy. So this is my favorite belt. I grew up watching this belt. I always wanted this belt. And now I have this belt. It's a real authentic belt and uh, I enjoy owning it. So I want to talk to you tonight about the champ is here. And I want to talk about what is in a champion's DNA. And I want to relate that to us as believers. So what characteristics or what characteristic traits make up a champion? If you are going to take notes tonight, number one is that what is in a character, what are the characteristic traits that are in that make up a champion is that they have determination to be the best versions of of themselves. And I want you, if you're going to follow along your Bible, I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians 9.24. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9.24. We're going to go to 27. And it says this, do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. 
They do it to receive a perishable wrath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Guys, I want to encourage you tonight to not allow yourself to be content with a mediocre faith. Don't be content. Don't, don't box the air. Don't be content with mediocre faith. Don't be content with an average walk with God. Don't be content with running an average race. Sometimes we get to a place where we start running the race thinking that we're just gonna, we're just trying to finish. But it says that, that do you not know that in a race, all the runners run? But only one receives the prize. So run that you may obtain it. Run to win. Run victoriously. Run with the mindset that you have the victory already. You have to run with the mindset that you are going to obtain the prize. Strive to be in the best spiritual shape that you can possibly be. Um, the best way I can put it is like this. You are the only one that is capable of being the best version of you. There's no one else in this world who is capable of being a better version of you than you, which means that you are to run the race to obtain the prize, to be the best version of yourself that you can be, to be the best possible, to, 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 to strive to be the best that you can be in your walk with God, to be the best that you can be while on this earth. So number one is you have to have determination to be the best version of yourself. Number two is that you have to have the belief that you can overcome all obstacles. I want you to, in your notes, I want you to capitalize all. You have to have the belief that you can overcome all obstacles. See, I want you to look at it like this. Champions look at obstacles as stepping stones. They don't allow obstacles to keep them barricaded away from their victory. Champions don't run from obstacles, but they face them head on and get this with no fear. As if you were, if you listened to last week's message, you would get this. If you didn't go back and check out last week's message with our faith over fear message, we talked about high flyers. We are to have no fear. We have to, uh, champions don't run from obstacles, but they face them head on with no fear. You face everything that comes against you head on with no fear. You walk and you run towards it victoriously. You run towards it knowing that you have the victory. There's no fear or doubt that can creep in and tell you that you lost. In fact, you run and you operate and you fight with the mindset that you've already won with the belief that you can overcome all obstacles. See, champions operate on a system of faith over fear. I've never met one champion who told me that they didn't believe that they couldn't win the belt. I've never met one champion who told me that they didn't have a belief that they could overcome any adversity or obstacles that were set before them. Even in David versus Goliath matches where, where the person who wins and it was a shocking thing, never once have I heard someone say, well, we were just as shocked as you were. No, they all had the belief that they could come back, that they could be victorious, that they could win, that they that they had what it took to be the champion the entire time. Even when things looked gloomy, even when things looked grim, even when things looked like they weren't going their way, they had the, the belief the entire time that they could overcome every single time. I've never met a champion who didn't believe that they could win. Champions operate on a system of faith over fear. Their faith drowns out and is louder than the voices of any kind of fear or doubt that could try to creep in. I want to give you some verses to back that up. Romans 8.28, if you're going to follow along, it says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who who are called according to his purpose. Well, champions, Christians, believers, you are meant to and called to be a champion. You are meant and called to live victoriously. You are meant and called to, to, to walk this earth as a champion. And it says in Romans that, that, that God works all things. There's that word all again. He works all things together for good for those 
who are called according to his purpose for those who are called champions by him which is you if you are calling if you if you have called on the name of god if you have asked jesus christ to be your lord and savior you are called according to his purpose which means that he is working all things together for your good james 1 2 through 4 and it says this count it all joy my brothers when you meet trials of various kinds for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing so what does this tell us it tells us that champions are going to face various trials that doesn't living victorious doesn't mean that you aren't going to meet opposition living victorious being a champion doesn't mean that you're not going to face opponents if anything, if you watch wrestling, it talks about when you become champion, it puts a target on your back. It puts a target on you to say, hey, you are now the the the, the prize. Everybody wants what you have. The devil wants what you have. He wants that victory away from you. He wants to take what makes you um, who you are in Christ. He wants to take that from you. And so you have a target on your back. You are going to face trials of various kinds. You are going to face opponents. You are going to go up against some things. But we know that the testing of our faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, meaning let it have its full reign in your life, that you may be perfect and complete. You, we, God wants his champions to be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. See, champions don't lack anything. They have the victory. They are victorious. The champion is known to be the one that gets the big paydays. The champion is the one who gets the, the attention and the fame and the, the recognition and, and, and all the good things that come with it. You are going to be lacking in nothing because it produce, that the, the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And when it has its full effect in your life, it's so that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing. Romans 5 Three and five, three through five says this. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that the, that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope uh, does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings. It says. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, meaning that champions are going to have some things that they're going to go through. Like we just said, you are going to meet trials. Champions don't have easy matches, okay? When champion watch wrestling, when the champion fights, it's gruesome because it, the person that's after this is not going to give up easy. The person that's after this is not going to go down without a fight. You are going to have to go through some things sometimes. And knowing that suffering produces endurance, I want you to get this, and endurance produces character, come on, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's been given to you. God gave you the Holy Spirit. He gave you everything that you need to overcome those sufferings, which is going to produce those things of endurance and character and hope. Matthew 17, 20 says this. He said to them, because of your little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. See, champions, all it takes to be a champion is to have this much faith. Now, your faith can grow, and your faith can rise, and you can build your faith. But it says here in Matthew that the faith of a mustard seed, of a grain of a mustard seed, is enough faith to tell a mountain to move from here to there, and it has to obey you. Faith this big has to move a mountain has to move from here to there a champion needs just this much faith to fight its battles a champion just needs this much faith to move mountains to defeat opponents it takes this much faith this much faith over your fear come on because it'll build and it'll grow as you as you utilize your faith and as you start to trust god with more it'll grow and it will build but it takes this much faith to tell mountains to move out of your way and it says, and nothing will be impossible for you. There won't be an opponent that can stand in your way when you're operating in faith.
Philippians 4, 13, I'm sure you've heard this scripture. And it says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. See, champions, they rely on, 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 especially in wrestling. If you watch wrestling, what do the champions rely on? They rely on the crowd, right? They rely on, on some kind of, um, build up or, or, or adrenaline that comes from the crowd or comes from somebody else's reaction. They're, that's what they rely on. And so Christians, we rely on the person who gives us strength. The crowd gives the champion. John Cena fed off the crowd. Any single time he was down and out, the Cena chance started to hit the stadium. He started to rise. He would fight and he would win. That's why he's a 16-time world champion. He would, that's what, that's what gave him the strength. It says you can do all things. You can defeat anything. You can overcome all things through him who gives you strength. Who gives you strength? Strength, Jesus Christ. Who's in your corner cheering you on, giving you that adrenaline rush, giving you that buildup, encouraging you, strengthening you, getting you back in the fight? It's God. It is, it is, is God who is there to give you strength so that you can do all things through him. John 16, 33, and it says this. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Again, we're talking about tribulation. We're talking about suffering. We're talking about uh, trials. It says, I have said these things to you. I've let you know that in me you have peace. In Christ you have peace. In Christ you know who you are and what God is going to do and what he's done. You know what he promises you in this word. You have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. In the world, you will have trials. You will have opponents. You will have things that you are going to have to come face to face with and go to battle with. But take heart, he says, but take heart. I have overcome the world. That means it's been defeated. It is under your feet and you are victorious, which means that you are a champion, that you are meant to carry this belt and you are meant to carry it throughout the entire world with peace and knowing that God has already overcome any opponent that you are up against. God has already overcome anything that you're about to battle against. He never will put you against an opponent that can defeat you because you have the victory. There is not an opponent that can defeat you unless you walk outside of the victory that God has already given you. And then we get to number three. Number three. So number one, just to recap, if you're following along, determination to be the best version of yourself. You need determination to be the best version of yourself. Number two, you need to have the belief that you can overcome all obstacles. And number three, you have to execute the game plan. Execute the game plan. Every champion has a game plan for success. They have diets. They have workouts. They have mental training. They have techniques and moves that they have perfected. They study their opponent to find their weak points. Let me tell you something. The, the And we're going to talk about this in some of these scriptures here. The devil studies and knows your weak points. All right. He knows what to test you with. All right. The devil even tried to test Jesus more than once, wanted to see if he could get tempt Jesus to, to, to jump outside uh, of, of who he was, to test him. He wanted to see if he could get to catch Jesus off guard. The devil knows what to tempt you with, and it's important that you study your opponent and know that he is going to, he's not, he's not coming up with anything new. He does the same old stuff because he's not smart. He's not tricky. He's not cunning. He, he is, he's just dirty. He is the exact definition of a, a, a heel in the WWE. He is the exact definition of, of the bad guy in WWE. He is going to play dirty. He's looking to get you with the low blow. He's looking to rake you in the eyes. He's looking to, to hit you when, when no one, when you're not looking. He's going to play dirty. He, he knows what to hit you with. But you have the ability to execute your game plan. You have to diet. You have to know what to, to take out of your life that's going to be unhealthy for your walk, that's going to be unhealthy for your growth, that's going to be unhealthy for, for who you are in Christ. You have to work out. You have to spiritually get in, in into to a place where you are in the best shape of your life. 
You have to get in the word. You need to be worshiping. You need to be in church and getting fed the word from, from your pastor. You need to be connected and serving and get, being sharpened by people who can sharpen you for Christ because the Bible talks about being sharpened. There are so many things that you need to work out in your life that, that will work you out spiritually. You need mental training. You need to, to train your mind and take take captive of those thoughts that hit your mind the bible says to renew your mind daily you need to renew that mind you need to come wake up every day knowing that it's time to renew my mind that today's a new day but i walk with the same victory that christ has already won for me wrestlers champions they have techniques and moves that they have perfected they have signature moves they have special moves they have moves that are going to end the match and 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 bring forth the victory that they already knew that they had you have to you have to to perfect your techniques and your moves. I know so many strong Christians. They have go to verses to stand on. They have go to verses that when when the enemy comes to attack, when the enemy comes to de, to defeat you and to try to take you out, there are scriptures that flow out of their mouth like like it's nothing. It, it is it's like they've been doing it their whole lives. I know for me, one of mine is John ten ten that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. Proverbs three five. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in always acknowledge Him. We have battle verses. We have things that when we go into battle, it's the first thing that flies out of our mouth. There are battle worship songs that flow out of your mouth. For me, it's fight my battles. For me, it's breakthrough. For There, there are so many songs that, that could just fly out of your mouth that from a heart of worship, you are defeating your enemy. There are times when, when, when I'm praying and, and it's like chains begin to fall and things begin to break because I'm, I'm going to those go-to things that I know are going to defeat the devil, that I know are going to defeat the enemy, that I know are going to bring forth my victory that I already have. So let's talk about it. Let's give you some scripture. First Timothy 4, 7 and 8. And it says, have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Don't be, don't be concerned about your irreverent, silly myths. Don't be concerned about what everyone else is trying to tell you that, that's right or wrong in your life. But train yourself for godliness. Meaning get in the word, just like I was talking about, get in the word, praise him, worship him, pray, get in church, strengthen yourself in godliness, strengthen yourself. Yes, it's good to work out. We, you know, we always refer to the, those hand in hand, just like you need to work out physically, you need to work out spiritually. Sometimes people need to understand they got to work out mentally and emotionally. It's important to build yourself up and strengthen yourself in those areas. Matthew 5, 19 says this, Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The ones who keep God's commandments are the champions. The ones who keep God's commandments, the ones who keep them and then teach others will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Well, I don't know any champion that's not been called great. They earned the belt for a reason. There was a reason why they were champion. There was a reason why they were given the belt. They, they, it's because they were disciplined. It's because they stuck true to the commandments. They stuck true to the rules. They stuck true to the things that were given to them. God's saying, but if you'll stay true to these commandments and then teach them, you will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Colossians 3.23, it says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as Working for the Lord, not for human matters. Whatever you do, champions, whatever they, it's in everything they do. Champions don't, they don't give lackluster performances. They don't give lackluster fights. They don't come into things with a mediocre attitude. They don't come in with a mediocre Christians. We cannot come in with a mediocre walk with God. We cannot come in with mediocre faith. We can't come in with average. Champions are above average. They strive for greatness. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. Work at it with all your heart. I want to encourage you, if you're not working at your relationship with Christ, if you're not trying to grow in your relationship with Christ with all your heart, you're doing it wrong. 
You got to go all the way in. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. I want to encourage you that this is not just in spiritual matters. At your job, do it with all your heart. Don't give a lackluster performance at your job. You're a representation of who Christ is. And Christ would never give a half average, barely uh, any effort kind of work ethic. He would do everything that he does with all his heart. Do everything, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. You're not here to work for humans. You're here to work unto the Lord. You're doing things unto the Lord. Everything that you do is unto the Lord. And that's how champions operate. They don't operate mediocrely. They don't operate on average. They operate above average. They operate at their best function in everything that they do. So I want to encourage you tonight. How do we defeat the enemy? How do we overcome the opponents that are coming after this belt? How do we overcome the, the things that are coming up against us to try to take our victory? Number one is this. Submit. And I don't mean submit to the enemy. James 4, 7, it says, Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You need to submit to God and resist the devil. The devil cannot stay where you, where you won't allow him. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Give everything of yourself to God. Give all, give it up. Submit means to tap out. Tap out to God and tap into him. And then resist the devil and he will flee from you. The opponent can't come near you unless you let him. The devil can't come near you unless you allow it. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. How do we defeat the enemy? We submit to God and we resist the devil. Number two, be sober minded. First Peter 5, 8 through 9 says this. Be sober mindful, be sober minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. It says, be sober minded, have a clear mind, be watchful, be looking, because the devil is, is prowling around like a roaring lion. It doesn't mean he is a roaring lion. We're not giving him credit like he's strong and powerful. The devil is weak and he's beneath you and he's under your feet. The devil prowls around. He wants you to think he's a roaring lion. Just like you're anytime the wrestlers, the champion faces an opponent, his opponent comes in like they're the best thing since sliced bread. His opponent comes in like they're ready and, and able to beat you with ease. We, they come in with this, this extreme confidence, but you have to resist him. Just like we said, resist the devil. He will flee from you. resist him and be firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are happening to those around you. The enemy is out to take people's victory he wants you to operate and and, and defeat but you don't operate in defeat because you're a champion because god has made you victorious and you walk in that victory and you stand firm in your faith and you resist the, the devil submit and resist the devil be sober-minded and resist the devil number three suit up therefore ephesians 6 13 therefore Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Let me put it to you like this. We cannot choose specialties when it comes to the armor of God. We don't get to choose what armor we put on. We are to put on the whole armor of God because when you choose specialties, you leave weaknesses open. When you choose specialties, you leave avenues and areas open that are easily accessed to be attacked. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. What's the evil day? Now, what you're facing, the opponent that's coming against you, what are you up against? So you can withstand, having done all to stand firm. You're not going to be standing there weak. You're going to stand firm on your faith. You're going to resist the devil. You're going to suit up in the whole armor of God. So you're going to um, submit and resist the devil. You're going to be, be sober-minded and resist the devil. You're going to suit up and resist the devil and stand firm. And then you're going to live according to the Spirit. Number four, live according to the Spirit. Romans 8, 5 says this, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, 
but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Roman, that's Romans 8, 5. See, God created you to be undefeated. And it's what happens is, is when we live according to our flesh, we set our minds on things according to the flesh. What happens? Well, the flesh doesn't even come close to the victory that we have in Jesus. There's nothing in the flesh that can even come close to the victory that we have in Jesus. And so the flesh will get you caught up on some things and get you convinced that you are, that you actually just, you end up getting less than what God created you to have. You end up getting less than God desires for you to have. And you get your mind on things of the flesh and you get lost. And then you end up losing the championship. You end up losing the victory that God has given you. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. They set their mind on the victory that they have in Jesus. They set their mind on the peace and the joy and the love and the comfort and the rest that they have in Jesus. See, God created you to be undefeated. God created you to be victorious. God created you to operate in victory. It says in Romans 8.31, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? When God is for you, when God is with you, when you are with God, when you are operating in him, there is nothing that can stand against you. If God is for you, what can stand against you? The answer is nothing. What can take your victory? The answer is nothing. What can take your joy? What can take your rest? What can take this championship from you? The answer is nothing when God is standing for you. You are an overcomer. You are a warrior. You are a champion. And you serve God who is the undisputed, undefeated, universal champion. That's who you serve. You serve the God who's never taken an L and never will. He's always had victory. He's always been victorious. He's always won the battle and he never will take an L. That's the God you serve. And I want to leave you with this. When you know God, you know his roles. See, champions, we know where our victory comes from. When you know God, you know his roles. You know that he's a father. You know that he's a peace bringer. You know he's a joy maker. You know that he brings rest. You know who he is. He is I am. He is I am whatever you need. When you know God, you know his roles. You know what he is and who he is and how he operates. And that is for you to lack nothing but to live victoriously, to live as a champion, to live your life undefeated. I want to encourage you that you, you don't, you're not, you're not in a battle to become the champ. You already are the champ. In fact, you need to start telling yourself that the champ is here. You're already, you've, if you are a, a believer in Christ, if you've already given your life to God, the victory is already yours. The champ is already here. He's in you. The Holy Spirit is in you, rocking in you, giving you everything you need to live and walk victoriously. The champ is here. Amen. Let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for each and every person watching this video, God. Lord, I pray for protection during this time of social distancing. God, I pray for peace and, and for joy in a time that is harder to find those two things, God. Lord, I pray that, that you strengthen us, you build us, and you, you remind us that, of who you are in our lives. God, when the enemy comes to try to steal and take our victory, remind us of the victory that we have in you. Remind us that the champ is already here, that we have already overcome because you overcame. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Lord, I reject COVID-19. I reject financial issues. Lord, I reject all of these things that are coming against your people, God. They have no place in your kingdom and in your people's lives. And they must go now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Have a great night. Join us next week as we wrap up our WWE series. Love you guys.